In Big Brother, no matter what's happening in a season, there are typically specific roles that are filled and they are made pretty clear by the end of the game. For starters, there's the front runner. This player is the likely favorite to win the whole thing, barring any massive shakeup or big move, and more often than not, we do in fact see this player take home the money. Next, there's the wild card. This player is usually a strong player, but one that typically needs to take out the front runner before the end of the game in order to snag the win for themselves. But then, there's my favorite role, the underdog. The underdog isn't supposed to win the game. They typically have the hardest road to the end compared to the other house guests, and even then, it's not a guarantee that they'll earn the votes from the jury. But when the stars align and you get to watch as the underdog survives week after week, slowly inching closer to that impossible finale, it can be some of the most exciting Big Brother to watch. This brings us to Big Brother 14. Big Brother 14 is one of the most chaotic seasons from start to finish and has some of the heaviest hitters the show had ever seen up to that point. But lost in the fray of the obvious front runners, we see a young and hopeful mind who is just happy to be there in the first place. We see this player basically start the game off as the underdog, yet as the season progresses, we watch him go toe to toe against some of the strongest players in the house, narrowly escaping danger week in and week out. And in the end, we see him go head to head against arguably the greatest player to ever play the game and come out victorious. How did this all happen? Well, it's time to find out. This is the story of how Ian Terry won Big Brother 14. I'm a chemical engineering student here at Tulane University. My high IQ is gonna give me an edge on the competition. Being able to think on your feet is gonna help me sail no problem to the half million dollars. $500,000 ticket right there. One thing that the players in the Big Brother house are constantly fighting for is safety, but luckily you don't have to thanks to today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is one of the most affordable and reliable VPNs on the market right now, and with the huge discount they're running right now, this is a deal you're not going to want to pass up on. On top of blocking all the malicious links, ads, and trackers, Atlas VPN gives you the ability to unlock your favorite content from all over the world. Big Brother Canada 11 is right around the corner, but unfortunately for those of us that live in the United States, we simply don't have access to watching this season play out. That's where Atlas VPN steps in. With literally just one simple click, you can set your connection to Canada, and before you know it, you have access to the Big Brother Canada website, where you can not only catch up on the most recent seasons of the show, but you can also watch the new episodes as they come out, and you can watch the live feeds. It's not just for Big Brother, though. You can use Atlas VPN to watch region-exclusive Netflix shows, you can save some coins while shopping online, and you even have the ability to protect unlimited devices within a single subscription. Right now, Atlas VPN is running running a huge discount. You can get a three-year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Time is running out, so get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Thanks again to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video, and with that, let's get back to the content. Ian Terry was a young 21-year-old college student who was studying chemical engineering at Tulane University. Ian was a Big Brother super fan, even stating that when he was just 10 years old, he was idolizing Dr. Will during the airing of Big Brother 2. Ian was by far the youngest house guest entering the Big Brother 14 house, being at least two years younger than the next closest house guest, so I can imagine it being a bit daunting walking into the house. As a huge, extreme Big Brother fan, I cannot believe that I'm in this house. Ian came into the game alongside 11 other new house guests, and they were quickly surprised once four legends of the game walked in as well. The competition beast and practical face of the show, Janelle Pierzina, the DR fan favorite and underrated strategist, Brittany Haynes, the Big Brother All-Stars winner and one half of Chilltown, Mike Boogie, and the very fun but sneaky winner of Big Brother 10, Dan Giesling. It was then unveiled to the house guests that these returning players would actually just be coaches, and these veterans would each draft three house guests to their team under the notion that whichever coach drafted the eventual winner of the season would receive $100,000. But once all the coach's players were evicted, that respective coach would leave the house too. Ian was the overall seventh selection in the draft and was the second player to be selected to Mike Boogie's team, alongside the very athletic Frank Udy and the former Kitty member Jen Arroyo. Mike Boogie. I'm gonna take my man Ian right here. All right, man, you're a legend, man, no matter what. 
For a little known piece of trivia, Mike Boogie had secretly snuck in a cell phone into his hotel room in the days leading up to the start of the season so that he could read up on the house guests and have better informed choices when it was his time to draft the house guests. So there was definitely something about Ian's biography that impressed Boogie enough to pick him. Anyways, Julie Chen announced to the house guests that for the first time ever, there would be a house guest leaving the house on night one. A competition took place between the four teams, and whichever team finished in first place would be safe for the first week and have one of those players become the first HOH for the season, whereas the last place team would be in big trouble, as that team's coach would have to evict one of their players by the end of the night. Although Ian was likely going to be safe if his team lost due to the fact that I believe Mike Boogie would have chosen to evict Jen over Ian, it never even had to be put to the test as Ian's team finished in second and therefore avoided the night one eviction. In the end, Brittany's team ended up finishing in first place and they decided to give the first HOH to Willie Hans, who, for the Survivor fans out there, was Russell Hans' brother. Dan's team had the misfortune of coming in last place and by the end of the night, Jody Rollins was evicted from the Big Brother house on just night one. Uh, Jody, I'm sorry, I have to evict you. Well, thanks, guys. I've been watching this show for a dang long time. I have never seen anything close to as cruel. If that's only the first night, <laughs> We've got a whole summer of things in store for us. <laughs> Although Ian was able to avoid the first eviction, it was only night one, and Ian had a whole lot of obstacles to overcome throughout the coming days. Right off the bat, Janelle and Brittany decided to join forces for the week, and with Brittany's team in power, that realistically only left five options for who could go home in week one. The two players on Dan's team, Kara and Danielle, and the three on Mike Boogie's team, Frank, Jen, and Ian. Already, those aren't great odds, but things ended up getting even worse for Ian. In the first few days, Ian had trouble finding his footing with the other house guests, and the other players found him to be a bit of a creep. He would dance around in his underwear, he went streaking across the house, and overall, he was driving a lot of the other players crazy. Being a super fan of the show, Ian was definitely nervous in the first few days, and he was just trying to live his Big Brother experience to the fullest. But it came at a cost, as the other house guests found it to be way over the top, and it made Ian the easy week one target that almost everyone would be on board with. You know, Ian's a very nice young man. However, I feel like he's a little bit of a creeper. Every time I look up, I feel like he's going to be suctioned to the wall staring at me. He's got to go. Ian would be an easy target this week. He's driving everybody in house crazy. If I put him up, I don't think anybody's really going to be upset about it. But thankfully for Ian, a miracle came his way. A new competition was introduced to the house called the coaches competition. This comp would only have the four coaches competing and the coach that ended up winning would have the power to keep one of their players safe for the week. Mike Boogie ended up winning the competition and correctly assessed that Ian was the player in the most danger. So he chose to grant Ian safety for the week. Like, any questions? Any questions? You know? And I'm just like, ah, oh, shut up, Boogie. You know? No, no questions. Mike, you have earned the right to keep one of your players safe from eviction this week. I'm going to invite down Ian. Ian has been making people a little nervous. He's been real jittery. And I felt like he had a very good chance to be nominated. Congrats. Here you go. Hand, handshake, please. <laughs> you all right? Just breathe. Just breathe. You're safe. 100% safety. Huge. This was huge for Ian, as he was more than likely going to be the week one boot without some sort of safety, and he made sure not to waste this gift. Ian acknowledged that he had had a bad first few days due to being overly nervous in the house, and with this new sense of safety for the week, Ian made a huge effort to try to become a little bit more comfortable in the house and to show off the more fun side of him to the other house guests. And to his credit, it worked. Once he was able to settle down and show the other house guests this new Ian, he began to form actual bonds with the other players, and he was making progress with reintegrating himself into the house dynamics as opposed to being the obvious outsider. Ian definitely had a long way to go before being in any sort of power position, but it was a crucial first step in the right direction for his long-term survival in the game. I can uh, kick myself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bad first few days here. I was really nervous. Anything that helps them see the fun side of me definitely helps me stay in this game longer. As for the rest of week one, Willie nominated Frank and Kara for eviction. Shane went on to win the power of veto. He didn't use it. And eventually a fight broke out between Frank and Willie. Although Frank was Ian's teammate and having Frank be evicted would certainly be a detriment to Ian's game, the fight in general ended up being a really solid thing for him. It put two giant targets on the board that were likely going to be focused 
focused on over Ian. And on top of that, the added chaos also pinned the coaches against each other. So at this point, there were so many fingers pointed at one another that Ian, who might I remind you, was basically the only target in the first few days, was now able to blend into the background as the bigger players geared to take shots at one another. This is getting bull right here. But you, I hope you go home this week. Okay. I hope everybody changes their votes and you go home because you a shady Eat your fruit loops. I ain't worried about it. At the end of the week, Kara was evicted over Frank in a vote of five to three, and Ian was trending upwards going into week two. By a vote of five to three, Kara, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. To start the second week, Ian was given yet another gift of safety once his teammate Frank won the HOH. I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet, but when a player won HOH, their entire team was given safety for the week. So Ian was given yet another week to focus on building his relationships while not having to worry about getting evicted. Although there were now some targets ahead of him and his position had improved from the first few days, Ian was not yet fully out of the woods. So we saw Mike Boogie get to work and actually coach Ian with some good advice. Say what you will about Boogie, but he knows the fundamental logistics of the game better than most players, so him being there to coach Ian is definitely an asset for Ian to utilize. Boogie encouraged Ian to show off more of his fun and chill side, hoping that a more relaxed Ian would make him more enticing to the rest of the house and allow him to not stand out as an outsider. Ian brought up the idea of asking Ashley out on a slop date, and although Boogie initially thought Ian stood no chance with Ashley, he reconsidered and realized that a fun, goofy date like this would make Ian a lot more personable and hopefully make Ian more comfortable around everyone. So Ian asked Ashley out on a date, she accepted, and they had a nice little evening where they got dressed up and hung out in the arcade room. Although Boogie was doing the coaching, it was Ian's idea to do a slop date in the first place, and whether or not Ian knew it, this whole ordeal went a long way towards everyone being more on board with keeping Ian around the house. He had a newly established bond with Ashley after this, and he also began to build some rapport with Brittany, which were steps in the positive direction here. Plus, he got a nice day with Ashley, so that's a big win for him. If you're the chill, fun Ian, I want to have a, like a slop date with Ashley, perhaps, something like that. You know, something fun. He doesn't have a chance with that girl. They've been egging me on about asking you on a slop date. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Would you be interested in doing um, that tonight? <laughs> sure. Okay, sounds good. Nice. Nice. Your lady away. Are you here? Oh, you look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, definitely the hottest girl I've ever taken on a date. I definitely think that a, a showman can help my game, and I think that if Ashley and I played this out right, we could go the distance. In the game. <laughs> As for the actual week, Willie Hans had completely ostracized himself from the rest of the house to the point that his own team wanted nothing to do with him. And not long after that, Willie headbutted Chef Joe in the bathroom while Ian, funnily enough, tried to break it up in his towel, and Willie was then expelled from the game. Would you say? Would you say? Would you say? Would you say? Oh, hit me! Hit me! Hit me! Hit me! Hit me! Violence is not tolerated in the Big Brother house, so Willie has been removed from the game. Willie is expelled from the game. He deserved it, and he will go down for the rest of his life as the least dignified exit in Big Brother history. With the primary target for the week gone, Frank chose to nominate the two remaining members from Britney's team, Shane and JoJo, and while Shane went on to win the veto and Danielle replaced him on the block, JoJo ended up being evicted from the Big Brother house by a vote of five to one. By a vote of five to one, JoJo, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. To start week three, Shane went on to win the HOH, and while this doesn't pertain to Ian at this specific moment, it's important to establish that at around this time, an alliance of four was created between Dan, Danielle, Shane, and Brittany. After Shane won the HOH, it was time for the coaches' competition, and we saw two things happen here. Firstly, we saw Boogie give Ian $3,000 in a moment that clearly meant a lot to Ian, and it was just really nice to watch. I'm gonna give Ian the 3,000 and Jen gets the 1,000. As a student, I don't even know what $3,000 is. That amount of money to me is huge. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. So Give me a hug. Great. Secondly, and more importantly, we got to see a part of Ian's overall strategy come into play. During the competition, Brittany had to pick two players to go on slot for the week. 
Ian had already been chosen slash had volunteered to be a have not in each of the first two weeks, but even still, Ian immediately shot his hand up and volunteered to go on slop for a third straight week. While the other house guests looked at Ian with disbelief, Ian revealed in the diary room that there was a method to his madness. Ian figured that if he was always willing to take the punishments, people would keep him around simply so that they wouldn't have to suffer the punishment themselves. And to Ian's credit, this is a really smart idea. I hadn't really seen this strategy implemented before and I honestly find it to be fairly innovative. In general, this makes Ian look like a huge team player. It incentivizes players to keep him around and on top of that, it doesn't look devious and it makes everyone happy. So in general, I think this is something about Ian's game that is quite underrated and I give him a lot of credit for it. Sorry coach, unfortunately you must pick two players to be have nots for the week. I'll do it. Ian, what? you are nuts. I'll do it again. There is strategy to this. I feel that if I am always willing to take punishments, people will keep me around simply because they won't have to. Anyways, for the actual week, Shane nominated Ashley and Joe for eviction, and Shane also went on to win the veto for the third time in a row. While Ian had been doing a pretty okay job of playing under the radar over the last couple of weeks, he did kind of flub it right here in a conversation with Brittany before the veto meeting. In this conversation, Brittany asked Ian if he would nominate Shane in the next week. Instead of just saying no, Ian used this weird terminology by saying it's not in the foreseeable future. And whether or not this was just Ian's way of saying no, the wording of it scared Brittany. Brittany went to talk to Shane about it and things started to go downhill from here. You yeah. want HOH next week if you're not putting Shane up, no matter what? I don't see any foreseeable circumstance in which that would happen. Not a foreseeable circumstance. Okay, not a good enough answer for me. Um, uh, I was just looking for a no. Thankfully though, Ian caught a bit of a lucky break. Whether it's because they underestimated Ian or whatnot, instead of turning their targets towards him, Shane and Brittany instead looked at Boogie. Shane and Brittany already didn't trust Boogie, and they figured that if Boogie had gotten into Ian's ear about Shane, then Boogie was definitely getting into Frank's ear about Shane. This then led to talks about a possible replacement nominee happening, and while Ian was even briefly considered as the target, Shane ended up going for the jugular and nominated Frank at the veto meeting. Now, in general, I do want to say that I don't put 100% of the blame on Ian for all of this transpiring. Brittany already did not trust Boogie, and therefore she was much more susceptible to flipping on him in the first place. So although on the show it was shown that Ian's conversation with Brittany was the catalyst for the backdooring of Frank, there was already turmoil between the two sides. So although I do think this was a misstep in Ian's game, I don't think the blame should be entirely put onto his shoulders. I'm sorry, but uh, I nominate Frank. I'm sorry. What just happened there? I'm freaking out a little bit now that Frank has been nominated for eviction. He's probably my strongest ally in this game, so him being on the block is just bad news. Now, after the veto meeting, Ian felt blindsided and upset, as he didn't see it coming, and he considered Frank to be his closest ally. But Ian was in store for a killer blindside come eviction night. Not only was Frank secretly the target over Joe, meaning that the player Ian considered to be his closest ally was about to walk out the door, a bigger bomb was then dropped that the coaches would be given the opportunity to stop being coaches and enter the game as players. And if just one coach accepted the deal, then all would enter the game and the eviction would be canceled. This, of course, was accepted, and Ian went from being just moments away from the final seven to back at the final 12 with the introduction of the four coaches and no eviction. It was a wild night and a total reset of the game. Frank was no longer going home, and chaos was about to erupt. And with that, things start to get more serious. No more could Ian hide in the shadows. It was time for him to make some moves and to really get in the game, and that's exactly what was about to happen. The coaches entering the game as full-fledged players, it's, it's awful. I went from a 1 in 7 shot at a half million dollars to a 1 in 12 shot. It hurt. It just, my stomach felt sick. To start out week four with basically an entirely new playing field, Ian was attached to the losing side of Boogie and Frank, and this was his time to break free and to not go down with the ship. The HOH was the wall cop, and Ian made it all the way down to the final three players, and he was even able to strike a deal with Danielle, the eventual winner of the HOH, to keep him safe for the week. This was great news for Ian, because this really was the start of a brand new game, so making a deal for safety for the week was crucial and allowed him the opportunity to think about his game moving forward. I'm safe. Yes, I'm yeah, you're safe. I you promise. 
On your life? On my life. Okay. On my life. Boogie and Frank began hanging out on their own, becoming even more of a visible twosome now that Boogie was a player in the game, and it made Ian feel like he was on an island of his own. So finally, Ian took his game into his own hands. Ian went up to the HOH room to talk with Brittany and Danielle about joining in on an alliance, and when he was asked if he would ever vote against Boogie, Ian answered correctly, and he nodded yes. Ian knew it was time to jump ship, and he was right. Now was the time for him to separate from Boogie and Frank and to join the other side before it was too late. Although it was clearly hard on Ian because he did truly like Frank, he knew it was best to detach and move on, and that's something to give him credit for. I'd like to be in something now. <laughs> Ever since the coaches joined the game, I've been feeling really alone. So at this point, I think I'd like to reach out and see what options are available to me. I mean, I'm tight with Boogie, but I mean, it seems the game has completely changed. Would you ever vote against him if you needed to? Ian's ready to jump ship from Boogie and Frank, and he's a smart kid. He comes right to the people who are in power this week. Ian is talking about how he doesn't want to be a free agent. I'm just, you know, I feel alone. I really like you, Ian. Are you truly reset and away from Team Boogie? Hard. As for the week, Danielle nominated Frank and Will for eviction, with Frank being the target. During the veto competition, Ian once more voluntarily chose to take a punishment, further cementing his strategy of taking the punishment so other people would want to keep him around, so good on him. Ian, you're out! All right. Come grab your third place prize. It's a dog's life? What the hell does that mean? You get to live a dog's life for 24 hours. Okay. You may only leave your pen if another house guest agrees to take you for a walk on a leash. Oh. Would you like to trade this prize for another? Keep the dog's oh. life. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. He is gonna live like a dog instead of a Maui it's vacation. 24 hours, dude. Dude, I got three grand. No need to be greedy here. Danielle ended up winning the veto over Frank, giving her all of the power for the week. And since Frank didn't win the veto, Ian figured it was now time to really try and solidify himself into the power structure that he was hoping to join. Up in the HOH room, Ian officially locked himself into an alliance called the Quack Pack, which consisted of himself, Dan, Danielle, Shane, and Brittany. Now, this is obviously great for Ian because he finally had an alliance, but it's important to note that the other four members already had a secret alliance prior to Ian. So it was sort of like Ian was added on as a fifth member without him even knowing that he was number five out of five. But regardless of where he stood in the alliance, it did set him up for the coming rounds and it gave him new relationships to work with. Ian was now getting closer with Brittany. Dan seemed very excited at the idea of working long-term with Ian, even outside of the Alliance. And now Ian was aligned with the biggest comp beast of the season so far in Shane. Now that Frank didn't win the veto, I think now's the time I should solidify my Alliance with Dan, Danielle, Brittany, and Shane. I think we can go pretty far in this game. We can do our name. Hold on, let me just like guess some. Quack Pack. Nope. Duck Squad. No, but I do like the Quack Pack. I kind of like that too. Ian reminds me of a younger version of myself. He's a little crazy, a little kooky, but he's very trustworthy. If I have the opportunity to run all the way to the end with this kid, I'm going to do it. One, two, three. Quack Pack. Quack pack. <laughs> Anyways, a confrontation occurred between Boogie and Janelle, and the Quack Pack decided that even though Frank and Boogie were an obvious duo threat, Janelle was probably the better person to target for the week, so Danielle took Will off the block and backdoored Janelle, who was then evicted at the end of the week. By a vote of eight to one, Janelle, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. After Frank survived yet another eviction, he came out swinging and won the week 5 HOH, which was definitely going to be good for Ian's game if he played his cards right. You see, Boogie and Frank were obviously not yet aware that Ian had secretly jumped ship over to the Quack Pack, so as long as Ian kept that fact a secret and pretended to still be Team Boogie and Frank, Ian would have absolutely nothing to worry about for the week. Ian played it well, and he didn't mess anything up, so we got to sit back and watch as the week played out. Even though Boogie and Frank still think I'm playing with them, my true alliance is the Quack Pack. Frank nominated Will and Joe, and then Frank went on to win the veto as well. Frank was itching for a reasoned backdoor Dan, and Ian knew it. So Ian, keen to protect his new alliance, went up to work on Frank to try and slyly talk him down on that idea, while still portraying to Frank that he was loyal to him. Ian said his piece to Frank, and although he certainly wasn't going to be the one to fully convince him to back down, Boogie also did not agree with his Dan idea, and he had a much stronger influence on Frank, so he was able to talk him down. 
So Frank reluctantly chose to not use the veto. The quack pack was fully safe for the week, and by the end of the week, Will was evicted. By a vote of six to two, Will, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Starting out in week six, Shane went out to win the HOH. And hey, look at that. Ian is in the quack pack with Shane. So it looked like he was primed for another week of safety. But that didn't mean that Ian was just going to sit back and do nothing. Before Will was evicted, Boogie had asked Ian who he would nominate if he won power. And Boogie floated the idea of maybe Brittany or Shane. Ian, wanting to make sure that his alliance knew what was going on, told Brittany this information, and he set in motion the plan to put both Boogie and Frank up on the block. Ian was basically acting as a spy since the Quack Pack was formed. He was the informant on what Boogie and Frank were up to, and he would relay this information back to help the alliance out. Ian was ready for the big swing to be taken at Boogie and Frank, and he was clearly pushing for it. I need to talk to Brittany about a conversation I had with Boogie right before the live show. If you win, who are you going to put up Brittany? James. Yeah, I guess. Think about it ahead of time. With the Quack Pack in power, I want to be sure that everyone in our alliance knows what's happening in this house. They have to go in the story. I just have to convince Shane that they're coming after him. Now that I've gotten the information from Ian, who is like our little spy, that Boogie will be coming after both me and Shane, there's no question that Frank and Boogie need to go up on the block and that one of them needs to go home this week. Ian made Brittany worried about it enough that she too was really pushing Shane to make the big move, and eventually, Shane obliged. At the nomination ceremony, Shane totally blindsided Frank and Boogie and nominated them. The duo soon figured out that someone must have sold them out to Shane, but they didn't suspect that it was Ian. Instead, they figured it was Dan. And for the time being, Dan was okay with covering for Ian and taking the heat himself as long as he could trust that Ian would be willing to do the same for him. I don't think it's Brittany we need to be mad at. Who is it? Dan. Don't let him pull you, son. How do you do? Convince Brittany and Shane to take a run at us. Wolf in sheep's clothing. Yes. I think it's really funny that uh, Frank and Boogie think that Dan is the one that released this information. He's not the wolf in sheep's clothing. I am. From here, a lot of the members of the Quack Pack started taking a lot of heat from Frank and Boogie while they were secretly protecting Ian. And although they did discuss many times the possibility of telling Frank and Boogie that Ian was in fact the one leaking the information all along, Ian had done such a good job of bringing in so much information to them that they chose to protect him in the end anyways. And that's something that you need to give Ian credit for. Anyways, Frank went on to win the veto, and Shane chose to replace him with Jen. Boogie and Frank thought that Ian was loyal to them all the way up until the end, but once the vote tally was revealed and Mike Boogie was evicted, Ian was exposed for voting against Boogie. After Boogie was evicted from the house, he was disappointed in Ian, but once he heard Ian's goodbye message, his demeanor completely flipped, and he even tipped his cap for the kid, which I think symbolized a lot. Mike Boogie is very good at the game of Big Brother, so the fact that he recognized that he got played by Ian, who he completely did not suspect at all, is something to commend him for. As for the game, Ian had finally found his place in the house, and he was strong enough to make the hard moves, and that was about to be even more put to the test as we finally enter the jury stage of the game. Hello, Ian. Hi. Please cast your vote to evict now. I sadly vote to evict Mike Boogie. By a vote of five to two, Boogie, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. You might say things you don't like, but I respect you. That ain't cool, doggy. Ian is not to be trusted. I know that already now. Ian, Sorry. what happened, dog? He's not cool, buddy. Seven, buddy. Not cool. I'm the one that told Brittany and Shane you were coming after them. This week, I masterminded your demise. I learned from one of the best, and that is why you're sitting with me right now. <laughs> At it. I'm not mad at him. I'm proud of him. He did learn from the best and that's why he did what he did. Now, before we begin with the jury stage of the game, it's important to establish something. Ian was, by far, the person who cared most about the Quack Pack out of any of its members. The other four members already had their own little foursome established prior to Ian joining in, but because Ian kept bringing in information and was doing a very solid job of showing his loyalty and wanting to protect his alliance, the foursome continued the role with Ian. None of this is to say that the members
members weren't loyal to Ian or anything like that, as we did just see them stick their neck out for him the prior week. But what I am saying is that in terms of the Alliance totem pole, Ian was not really on top of anybody's standings for the time being. Even though Ian was on the bottom of this alliance, it's impossible to not give him credit for just how good of an alliance member he really was. Like, he did everything you could hope for as an ally. He brought in valuable information, he played spy on the other side, yet was fully loyal to the Alliance, he would come and tell you when he heard your name being brought up, and overall he was extremely useful and valuable, and this loyalty ended up being the saving grace for Ian later on in the game. In terms of where Ian stood heading into the jury stage, he had a really good relationship with Brittany, a solid relationship with Dan, and he was in an alliance with Shane and Danielle, but by voting against Boogie, Frank had just lost a lot of trust with Ian. Things were wild, crazy, and hectic, and they were about to get even more interesting because it's double eviction time. Does everyone understand? Yes, yes Jules. Good. Then let's begin. So, at the final nine, right after Boogie was evicted, Frank berated Ian in front of everybody for not giving Boogie his vote, and Ian just had to take it. Ian clearly was feeling bad, but he knew what he had to do, and credit to him for sticking to his guns. Immediately afterwards, it was time for the first double eviction of the season, and even though Ian tried to throw it, he was unsuccessful, and he actually won his first HOH of the summer. With no time to really think about it, Ian had a tough decision to make. He had already gone back on Boogie, and he knew that his alliance was going to want him to target Frank, but he didn't want to have to be the one to do it. He also knew that the best way to get rid of Frank would be to backdoor him, but for his alliance, he decided to just go for it, and he nominated the two people that voted for Boogie to stay. Frank and Ashley. I am sure this must have torn Ian up as he already didn't want to be the one to send Frank home, who, might I add, he considered to be his closest ally just a few weeks prior, but on top of that, he also had to nominate him next to the girl he had a crush on, Ashley. But, to Ian's credit, he must have been wearing his big boy pants because he went through with the nominations. Although the move must have been very difficult for him to make, it really solidified the trust that some of the other Quack Pack players had in him, namely Dan. Unfortunately for Ian, he couldn't have everything go his way that night, as Frank went on to win the veto, meaning that Ian had just taken a big swing and missed, and he was surely going to have to face some consequences afterwards. Ian chose to replace Frank with Joe, and although personally I'm sure Ian would have loved for Ash to stay, she was evicted at the end of the night, bringing a close to a wild double eviction and leading us into the final eight. No backbone. He gave you $3,000. Sorry. He bro. saved you the first week and you can't even give him a vote. 419 seconds, which means congratulations, Ian. You are the new head of household. I really tried to throw that HOH competition. <laughs> the Quack Pack's going to want me to go after Frank, but I don't want to be the one to have to do it. We got you, dude. Just breathe, man. No matter what happens. I hate to do it to you. Frank uh, and Ash, I, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Ian has finally shown some action to back up the Quack Pack. Up until this point, the Quack Pack never knew what Ian was going to do. Now it's apparent what team he's on and where he's going in this game. You're a puppet, yo. So simple. Congratulations, Frank. You have won the... Quack Pack should have tried to backdoor Frank instead, but now we have to fear the wrath of a very angry Frank. I'm gonna make a team. Taking advantage of him like that. You should be ashamed of yourself. By a vote of five to one, Ashley, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. She got caught in a huge power struggle, and that's not how this night was supposed to play out. After the craziness of the double eviction went down, hell broke loose once Frank started yelling at everybody. To be fair, he had just been stabbed in the back twice by Ian, lost both of his closest allies, and was public enemy number one, so he had nothing to lose. Ian felt absolutely awful about what had happened, but his alliance was there for him. Brittany stood up for him when Frank yelled at him, and Dan gave Ian a damn good pep talk after the fact to get his head back in the game, and then did not feel bad about what he had done. With four Quack Packers playing in the next HOH comp, Ian had good odds that an Alliance member of his would win power, but of course, Frank pulled off the Cinderella story in one HOH for the third time this season. Crazily enough, after things died down a little bit, Frank was most heated at one player in particular. Not Ian, but Dan. In Frank's mind, Dan was still the one that had ratted Boogie and Frank out, even though it was actually Ian. 
So, Frank was convinced that Dan had to be the one that convinced Ian to do everything that he did on Double Eviction Night, so Dan was far and away Frank's number one target. So somehow, I guess this was kinda good for Ian? It's not often that you can take such a big shot in the game, miss, and then not be targeted once that player survives and wins power, so Ian was just lucky to not be target number one. After Frank won the HOH, Frank opened Pandora's box, and it had the potential to majorly shake up the game for the week, because a second veto was hidden in the arcade claw machine, and whichever player successfully got the ball out of the machine first would earn an extra veto for the week and be safe. Although Dan wanted it the most, Ian came out victorious, snagging the ball and guaranteeing his safety for the week in a spot in the final seven. Hey kids! What? Rap City, baby! He got it. I win the golden veto out of the claw machine. When the adrenaline's rushing and you need this thing, it feels really good to have it in the palm of your hand. This now marks the second straight week that Ian had won safety, which isn't so bad, especially since Ian easily could have become the primary target had Dan won the extra veto. With Ian safe, Frank went ahead with his initial plan and nominated Dan and Danielle, with Dan being the primary target. Everything came down to the veto competition. If a quack packer were to win the comp, they could use one veto to save Dan, then use Ian's veto to save Danielle, and then they'd have the numbers to send Joe home. But if a quack packer didn't win the veto, Dan would more than likely be evicted at the end of the week. It was a back and forth veto comp, but in the end, Jen won the power of veto to ensure that Dan would stay on the block and be evicted by the end of the week. Although Dan was banking on Ian possibly using his veto to save Dan anyways, Frank had told Ian that if he used the veto, Brittany would be his replacement nominee and would be evicted, and since Brittany was Ian's number one ally at this point, he wasn't going to use it. So, it looked like the vetoes weren't going to be used, the nominations would stay the same, and Dan would be evicted by the end of the week. That is, until Dan's funeral happened. You see, Dan had come up with a master plan while he was facing a solitary confinement punishment to host his own funeral once the punishment was over. At the funeral, he told everyone he was done playing the game, then he said one nice thing to every house guest except for his number one ally, Danielle, who he blindsided by saying she was dead to him in the game. You'll never earn my trust back. You know what you did. And in this game, you're dead to me. So don't come to me and ask about it because it's over. Then Dan took Frank upstairs and spoke to him privately. In this conversation, Dan completely exposed the quack pack to Frank, told him it was a five person alliance and that Dan was not the player who ratted Frank and Boogie out, but that it was actually Ian. There was an alliance created, not with four people, with five people. Man, I knew it. Oh sh Dan had just completely blown up Ian's game, and now Frank knew the full extent of how Ian had betrayed him in Boogie. In a complete Hail Mary, Dan had gone from being Frank's number one enemy to being in a new alliance with Frank, alongside Jen and Danielle, and since Jen had won the veto, they could use the veto to save Dan and then target Ian. But thankfully, that second veto that Ian had won came back to really save his ass. Since Ian was safe with the veto and could not be nominated, Ian was able to avoid what would have been a surefire eviction from Frank. But do you know who didn't have protection? Brittany, Ian's number one ally. And Ian didn't have a clue that it was coming. So, at the veto meeting, Ian went first and chose not to use his veto, but once it was Jen's turn, it was blindside time. Jen decided to use her veto to save Dan, and then when it was Frank's turn to name a replacement, he let Ian have it. He reminded Ian of all the backstabbing that he had done to him throughout the last couple of weeks, but since he couldn't actually put Ian up due to the veto that he had won, he would have to do the next best thing and nominate his closest ally, Brittany. I have decided to use the power of veto on Dan. Ian, you voted Mike out last week, and then you put me and my other closest ally up on the block. You won the veto, so I can't put you up. I gotta do the next best thing and put your closest ally up on the block. Brittany, pop a squat. Frank got the old backstab in on me. If you thought I was coming after him before, I'm coming after him now. 
This was both a huge shock and a huge blow to Ian's game. Brittany had become such a crucial ally for Ian, and now he was going to lose her. Ian got into many arguments with Frank after this happened, and Ian declared that Frank was without a doubt his primary target after this. So it really was a matter of if he could get Frank out before Frank got him out first. By the end of the week, it was clear that Brittany was a goner, and by a vote of 4-1, to one, Brittany was evicted from the Big Brother house, with only Ian voting for her to stay. You all right, Frank? Oh, that's a tough position. Yeah. Yeah. Tough decision that you had several days to think about. You had several days to decide you were going to vote Mike out. Seconds. Frank, let, let those horns you. come on out, Ian. Frank? Let them come out. Frank, because right. it was really easy for you to vote against Mike, and it was really easy for me and Oh, Asha. it was really easy for me to vote against Mike because I cried all and day. And then you told that him to the get to stepping. You told him to get to stepping. If anybody in this house takes him to the end, they're a fool. You sit next to him in the final two, he wins 7-0. I got this carrot costume on. I'm sitting here having a freaking toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Ian. Hi, Julie. Please cast your vote to evict. I vote to evict Danielle. By a vote of four to one, Brittany, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Overall, it was a crazy, crazy week that had the entire house dynamics flipped upside down, and Ian was this close to being evicted had it not been for that second power of veto. But Ian survived it, and the big question was, how was he going to recover from such a devastating blow? You are one of the best people that I have had the pleasure of meeting. This season's true beauty has been evicted from the house. I will get it that hairy orange beast. <laughs> <laughs> to kick off the final seven, it was an endurance HOH. And to keep his promise on getting revenge for Britney's eviction, Ian went out and won the HOH for the week. Yes, I win HOH. I'm definitely in the top six. And now I have the perfect opportunity to avenge Britney's eviction. This year marked the third straight week that Ian had won safety, and it couldn't have come at a better time, as Ian definitely would have been a target for Jen and maybe even Joe. Before Brittany was evicted, Ian went out to Dan and made an effort to reform the Quack Pack moving forward. And I think the urgency that Ian had to make this happen is something to commend. Ian knew that his position took a major hit once Brittany was going to get evicted, yet Ian tried to salvage what he could to at least give him a fighting chance moving forward. So by winning the following HOH and therefore shifting the power back over to his side, it made it easy for the Quack Pack to reform, and this allowed Ian another week to try and reestablish those connections and to make a new number one ally. We quickly saw this start to take place, and before we knew it, Ian looked to Dan to become his new number one. And they made a final two deal, which they called the Renegades 2.0. Ian still trusted Dan through everything, and although that trust was kind of misplaced as Dan would only ever look after himself, it did end up saving Ian way later on down the line, so I guess we can consider it another lucky break for Ian. Time for you to earn your renegade stripe. Listen, when I made this punch before, it's renegades to the end. Are you in to the end? I'm into the You'll end. take me to the final yes. two? I'll take you to the final two. Let's do it. Anyways, as for the week, Ian chose to initially nominate Frank and Jen for eviction. Dan ended up winning the veto, and he used it to save Jen, which he said was to repay the favor of her saving him the prior week, but we really knew it was so that he could save face with all the deals that he made. Ian then nominated Joe as the replacement nominee, and by the end of the week, Frank had finally run out of lives, and he was evicted from the house in seventh place. By a vote of three to one, Frank, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. We've had our ups and downs in this game. We work together against each other, together against each other. You are the ultimate threat to me or anybody else winning this thing. Ian should have been looking good going into the final six, as his alliance made up the majority of the players competing in the HOH, but you can never feel too safe in the Big Brother house. Frank is out the door, so why not send another big threat out the door behind him? Heading into the final six in what I like to call the end game, we find out that it's time for the second double eviction of the summer. As the previous HOH, Ian had to sit back and watch as Dan won the critical double eviction HOH. As Ian's closest ally, he should have been thrilled. But things aren't always as they seem. To start off, Dan brings Ian to the side and says, Listen, I had to put Memphis up as a pawn, which was a reference to Dan nominating his original Renegade partner, Memphis Garrett, every time he was HOH back in Big Brother 10. 
Dan said this to Ian, insinuating that he would nominate Ian as a pawn next to Joe, with the whole idea being that this would hide their secret final two from the rest of the house. Although this made Ian really nervous, he didn't really have a choice, so he had to oblige. What Ian didn't know, though, was that this was a part of Dan's plan to take Ian out. Dan had realized that Ian was building momentum heading into the endgame. Not only was Ian on a hot comp streak, but he had just taken out Frank. He was the one that could put getting rid of Boogie on his resume, and he had a hell of an underdog story. So Dan secretly informed the other Quack Packers about this plan, and while Danielle was instantly on board with it, Shane was hesitant. And whether that be because Ian had really grown on Shane, or if Shane was just too honorable of a guy, I think Ian should get a little bit of credit here for leaving enough of an impact on Shane to have him hesitate on turning on him. Regardless of what Shane felt though, Dan had the numbers to send Ian home if he wanted to. So Dan nominated Ian and Joe for eviction, and it all came down to the veto. Ian didn't know it at this point, but this was a win or go home situation for him. So Ian stepped up to the plate and he knocked it out of the park, absolutely crushing everyone else in walking away with the veto win. Not only did this keep Ian safe during the double eviction round, but this was his fourth consecutive round that he had earned his safety, which was a wild streak. Dan's secret plan to get rid of the kid had been stuffed, and Dan now had to resort to a different plan. He briefly considered taking the shot at Shane this round, but Danielle talked him out of it. So in the end, Ian took himself off the block, Dan named Danielle as the replacement nominee, and Chef Joe was evicted from the Big Brother house in sixth place. I just won HOH. Frank is out the door, so why not send another big threat out the door behind him? Ian's very dangerous in this game. He's so smart and he's a great mental competitor, and I'm not sure I have the smarts to beat him. Listen to me. I do a map this up as a bond. That's the only way we come to the running game. Don't go at all. We gotta consider maybe getting a bond. I don't know what to do early. Contrary to popular belief, I don't enjoy stabbing people in the back, but it's what I have to do to try to get to the end and win this thing. And Ian, sorry buddy, you haven't been nominated yet. Gotta feel it. And it looks like Ian is seconds away. Congratulations, yes. Ian, you have won the power of veto. Winning that veto was the best feeling I've ever had in my whole life. <sighs> Woo! Are you kidding me? Ian just won the veto. I wanted him out. Now I can't get him out. Uh, bruised my hand to do it. I'm gonna take myself off the block. By a vote of three to zero. Joe, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Now, there is a bit we gotta discuss here. First off, Holy moly is Ian Clutch. This kid has now won a veto in two out of the last three weeks that saved his life in the game, and to top it off, he also had two HOHs thrown in there. As for the double eviction, there's some things we gotta talk about. I didn't mention this before, but this was actually the first time that Ian was nominated all season long, which, at first glance, I thought was insanely impressive given how much of a big target he was at the very start, but then I remembered that out of the first nine rounds of the season, Ian had guaranteed safety for five of them and and had an alliance member win the HOH in an additional three rounds, so there was really only one week that Ian had a legitimate shot at being nominated. Regardless, it's still impressive nonetheless. The next thing we gotta talk about is the fact that Dan was willing and ready to cut Ian so early after making a final two. Now, you do have to dock Ian some points here for not managing Dan better, but I don't blame him all that much. Had Dan not been such a good player and had so many final twos with the other house guests, then Dan probably doesn't take the shot on Ian here because Ian would not be an expendable option anymore. Dan could afford to lose Ian because he still had a final two deal with Danielle and a brewing final two opportunity with Jen going into the final five. So Dan was still safely covered and could feel free to take the shot at a serious jury threat like Ian. So overall, I feel like the reason Ian was targeted by Dan here was not so much due to Ian misplaying, but because Dan played super well and had the opportunity to cut his most dangerous final two partner, which just so happened to be Ian. Regardless, none of that stuff even mattered because Ian won the veto, which guaranteed his safety and his spot in the final five. Going into the final five, Ian had no idea that Dan had just tried to send him home, so Ian was still quack pack strong. 
Unfortunately, most of the other members, including Shane now, were ready for Ian to go home, especially after pulling out the clutch double eviction veto win. They should have known, though, that another opportunity to get rid of Ian wasn't going to come easily because Ian Terry went out there and won the final five HOH. This was the fifth straight week that Ian had won safety, which to this day is still a big brother record. But more importantly, it guaranteed Ian a spot in the final four. Ian and Shane, the correct answer was day 34. I did it. Ian, congratulations. You're the new HOH, buddy. I can't believe that I actually got to the final four on Big Brother. It's a dream come true. This is my face to Ian winning. Ian knocked out Shane. This kid just secured himself in the final four, and he's going to do well there. We've got trouble, and it's named Ian. Ian was still unaware that his alliance was trying to get rid of him, so Ian wanted to target the last remaining non-quack packer left standing, his old teammate Jen City. So Ian nominated Jen next to Shane, who was his pawn. Shane went on to win the veto, Ian chose to nominate Danielle as his replacement, and by the end of the week, Jen was evicted in fifth place. With that, we now head into the final four. By a vote of two to zero, Jen, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Going into the final four, Ian had to sit back and watch as Danielle won the final four HOH. Ian was nominated next to Dan, but nominations really didn't matter as it all came down to the veto. At this point, Dan actually was redirecting his target from Ian over to Shane. As now that Shane had survived so far and would certainly bring Danielle to the final two over Dan, Dan needed him out. So this was great news for Ian, as it now meant that either himself or Dan could win the veto and they would both be safe. Unfortunately, that wish came crashing down once Danielle also went on to win the final power of veto of the summer. This would mark the first time since before the jury even started that Ian would be vulnerable to be evicted. And since Danielle was so close to Shane and Shane was already on board to get rid of Ian from the prior week due to him being such a big jury threat, Shane was going to evict Ian in fourth place. 99 times out of 100, this would be the end of Ian's story. Danielle had been ready to get rid of Ian for weeks. She had won all of the power for the week and Shane was primed and ready to vote him out. But every now and then, you get that one in a hundred moment. Like I said earlier, Dan was now back on the Ian train and was ready to get Shane out. So Dan got to work. He used the last of his Dan magic on Danielle and he successfully convinced her to let him get the blood on his hands and vote out Ian. He had to swear up and down that he wasn't pulling any antics and she believed him. So at the veto ceremony, for some reason, Danielle used the veto on Dan and named Shane the replacement nominee. And of course, Dan turned things right around on Danielle, and instead of evicting Ian, Dan evicted Shane in the most brutal blindside in all of Big Brother history. Anytime I'm sitting on the block after the veto, I'm going home. If I pull you down, are you saving Shane? Yeah. You swear? Yeah, I'll do whatever you want. Well, I send Shane packing in a heartbeat. But I've decided to use the power of veto to save you, Dan. Real quick, Shane, you're a heck of a competitor. Ian, you're an equal competitor. Both of you guys got a great shot to win this game. There's something big in this house. You're gonna have one shot to break up, and this is that shot. So Shane, I'm sorry I have to evict you. If. Holy sh Ian went from having a one-way ticket to the jury house to sitting in the final three, all because Dan managed to pull one last rabbit out of his hat. Now, obviously, Dan didn't do this move to save Ian. He did it to get rid of Shane. And this put Dan in a position where he would be sitting in the final three and both of the other players would bring him to the final two. But none of this is to say that Ian deserves zero credit here. Dan never would have gone out of his way to make such a crazy move if he wasn't sure that Ian would take him to the final two. So by Ian being such a good and loyal ally, always being ride or die with Dan from the final seven onwards and making him feel very safe was key to Ian's survival here. Ian's loyalty pushed him further in the game at around the halfway point, and now it got him a spot in the final three, and he deserves credit for it. Now, all Ian had to do was make it one more round, and he'd be sitting in the final two. Holy hell, Dan hoodwinked Danielle basically into voting out her boyfriend, and I'm still here. You know, what happened out there was pretty ugly, but uh, I'm still here, so thank you, Dan. What? What? 
What? I have a one in three shot at winning Big Brother. I can do this. So this was it. The final three. It was Ian versus Dan versus Danielle, and it was now time to start part one of the final HOH. Due to Dan literally just saving Ian's life in the game like 20 minutes prior, Ian had made a deal with Dan that he would throw part one to him in return for his survival, and that's exactly what he did. Ian threw part one to Dan, and Dan won it. Then, in part two, Ian was able to just beat out Danielle and move on to part three with Dan. In Ian's mind, he was now guaranteed to be sitting in the final two, as he did have his final two deal with Dan, and he was actually right. Although Dan portrayed on the show that he was going to take Danielle to the end if he had the chance, Dan had later on stated that he was actually planning on taking Ian to the end, because at the time, Dan really didn't think that he stood a chance against Danielle in the final two. So, it really didn't matter who won the final HOH, as Ian would have had a spot in those final two chairs. But just for the fun of it, Ian went perfect on the questions in part three, absolutely destroying Dan, and therefore Ian was crowned the final head of household, his fourth of the summer, and coincidentally, his fourth in a row. At the final eviction, Ian chose to honor his final two deal with Dan, and Ian evicted Danielle in third place. Ian, congratulations. You are the final head of household. Danielle, you're the sweetest person I've ever met in my life, but I have to honor my commitment to Dan, so I vote to evict Danielle. Sorry. And now, this was it. The final two. All Ian had standing in his way from the $500,000 prize was the greatest Big Brother player to ever play the game. No pressure, though. Ian, Dan, in just a few moments, the jury will be voting for the person they want to see win Big Brother, but before they do, they have some questions for the two of you. Sitting in the final two chairs, it was now time to face the jury. Although on paper, it should have been terrifying for Ian to be sitting next to Dan, who had just played one of the craziest and most impressive games of all time, Ian showed confidence in his answers. He laid out some facts that were impossible to ignore. Ian smoked Dan from a competition standpoint. He had won four HOHs and two POVs, while Dan had only won one of each. Ian had only one life in the game, whereas Dan lost two of his players in just the very first week. And Ian had one thing on Dan that definitely helped him the most. He didn't betray the jury nearly to the level that Dan did. Whether Ian knew it or not, Dan was never going to win a jury vote. The jurors did not want a returning player to win the game, and they certainly didn't want it to be Dan after he backstabbed and blindsided pretty much all of them. When you compare that to Ian, who was the young underdog who started out from the bottom, out battling some of the best competitors that the show had ever seen, taking out Frank, bamboozling Mike Boogie along the way, winning clutch competitions when he needed to, Ian was doing a really good job for himself in giving the jury a reason to vote for him over Dan. While Ian's game had many holes to it, without a doubt, he had more than enough on his resume that made it so that the jurors wanted to vote for him to win, and that's exactly what happened. The jurors put in their keys, and when it was time to reveal the vote, it was swift and quick. Although the first vote from Danielle went to Dan, it was lights out from there. Shane voted for Ian. Jen voted for Ian. Joe voted for Ian. And Frank voted for Ian. Just like that, by a vote of six to one, Ian Terry was crowned the winner of Big Brother 14. Shane's vote goes to Ian. Jen's vote goes to Ian. Joe has put his vote for Ian. Frank's vote goes to Congratulations, Ian. You are the winner. It was certainly a long and confusing road to the victory for Ian. Many viewers think that Ian is one of the greatest winners ever, while others think the opposite, claiming that he just comped his way to the end and then won due to a bitter jury. But I definitely don't think that's fair to say. Although Ian certainly had his missteps and needed to rely on safety more often than some other winners of the show, Ian had a drive to win the game that a lot of other players simply didn't have. He played the secret informant that both got Mike Boogie evicted and greatly weakened Frank, and he didn't even get caught until way later on down the line when Dan needed to rat him out in order to save his own butt in the game. Ian came up with a strategy to constantly volunteer for punishments in the hopes that other players would keep him around so they themselves wouldn't have to endure the punishment. 
accomplishments. And although it sounds like a silly strategy, it is fairly innovative. And I think it would be wrong to say that it had no impact on Ian's perception in the house. This also happened to be an era where competitions were valued to a greater extent than they may be today. So Ian winning four HOHs and two vetoes is not only really impressive, but it was something that the jury could look at concretely and say, yes, Ian did crush the game in this aspect. Obviously, the biggest complaint that people have is that Dan far and away played the superior game, which can be a fair point. Dan absolutely ran the show, and some of the moves that he pulled off were downright magical, but that doesn't mean that Ian deserved to lose. Ian put together his own resume, and it clearly resonated well with some of the jurors. Brittany said that she was more than willing to vote for Dan, but when Dan was sitting next to Ian, she chose to give her vote to Ian because that's what she wanted to do. That's not a bitter vote. And I know that's only one example, but the point is that Ian's win should not solely be remembered as Dan's unfair loss, because that's a disservice to the path that Ian had to take to get to the end. And you know what? I bet Ian's game would win in a lot of modern day Final Twos. Everyone loves an underdog story, and Ian gave one of the best ones ever. I'm not here trying to say that Ian outplayed Dan, or that Ian was this mastermind that deserved to win over Dan. I am simply trying to say that there is more than just one way to win Big Brother. And just because you may not value the specific aspects that led to a player winning the game, that doesn't mean that that player did not deserve to win in general. I've said it before and I'll say it again, but there is more to Big Brother than just the strategic game. And I do personally think that Ian had done more than enough in the game to earn a win if that is what the jurors chose to do. So overall, I think it's totally fair to give Ian a 5 out of 10 on the winner ratings because Ian's road to the win was very up and down, and I think a score right in the middle is a good way to balance it all out. I've played this game with three things, probability, statistics, and a little bit of heart. I covered my bases, I made smart decisions for myself, and I controlled my own destiny in this game. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> If you're still not convinced, I can understand that, but I will leave you with this. Before Ian even stepped foot inside the Big Brother house, he had drawn up his ideal plan to win. Before the game, he wanted to be in a five-person alliance and be towards the bottom of the totem pole. In the game, he had the quack pack, and he was indeed at the bottom of the totem pole. Before the game, he wanted to be in a showmance with someone that was outside of the alliance. In the game, well, you can't really call Ashley his showmance, but he did have Ashley as his little flirtmance, and she was indeed not in the alliance. So, so far, we are two for two on Ian's plans. Before the game, Ian wanted to assess his position in the house in week six and potentially jump ship from his alliance if he felt it was necessary. In the game, he may have gotten the week wrong, but in week four, he realized that his current position working with Frank and Boogie was going to tank his game, so he did in fact jump ship over to the quack pack, and that carried him further into the season. Do you see the point I'm trying to make here? You don't need to play this perfect game or even aim to play a perfect game in order to get the win. Ian came up with a plan that he thought would work for him and get him to the $500,000, and he was right. It wasn't a perfect plan, but it was his plan. And in the end, he walked away with the win. How are you feeling right now? This is easily the best moment of my entire life. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how the hell I pulled it off, especially after the first week I had, but quack, quack, that's all I gotta say. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I think I'm gonna get back into posting regular videos. I kinda miss it. For now, it's just gonna be like every other week. Then over the summer, I may post twice a week again. But for now, that's a giant maybe. But I thought I would let you in on it. Now, I of course need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members who have continued to stick with me even through this gigantic break. So thank you. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. Long day today. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit difficult to flirt with Ashley and keep her attention when we have a shirtless Shane over there. That's straight up gangster right there. I actually was doing that same amount of weight earlier, except wasn't struggling. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs>